This is Dr. Stanley Kim again, the hematologist in Claremont, California. Now, I like to discuss about the history of myeloma treatment, current treatment, and uh, future perspectives. Do you know that uh, eight scientists were awarded Nobel Prize for their research related to multiple myeloma treatments? Let's discuss more in detail. Thank you for watching. About 200 years ago, there was a uh, trade man by the name of Thomas McBean, who had a severe bone pain and multiple fractures. He was treated by a doctor in London. He cut his vein in the arm, and drained the blood, so-called bloodletting procedures. With some improvement, I guess the uh, draining blood uh, removed the uh, uh, M protein, so his symptoms got better for a while. After his death, autopsy discovered many holes in the bones and the large cells in the bone marrow. His urine was studied by Dr. Henry Vance Jones, who found the protein precipitating in cold temperatures. This protein was called Vance Jones protein since then. In 1961, Dr. Gerald Edelman first identified the structural antibody, the immunoglobin. And in 1962, he confirmed that Vance Jones protein is the light chains of M protein of multiple myeloma. And he was awarded Nobel Prize in Physiology Medicine in 1972. Since the discovery of X-ray by Rentigan, Henry Becquerel and Pierre Marie Curie discovered radioactivity opening doors for radiotherapy. Then the following year, Dr. Group treated the breast cancer woman with the radiotherapy for the first time and then bone lesions were treated thereafter. 1947, urethane was introduced, which decreased the serum globulin of myeloma patients, but a study in 1965 showed the patients treated with the urethane died even earlier than placebo group, so it was abandoned permanently. 1953, melphalan was first synthesized by UK scientists, and in 1958, Russian scientists led by Dr. Blokhin reported that melphalan was effective in treating myeloma, myeloma patients. In 1962, Dr. Mass in the Oregon VA hospital reported prednisone is effective in relieving the symptoms of myeloma. Melphalan is an alkylating uh, chemotherapy drugs inhibiting DNA and RNA synthesis. Please look at these pictures. Nobel Prize laureates, Rentigan, Becquerel, and um, Pierre and Marie Curie. In 1969, Dr. Alexandrian in Texas and uh, his colleagues reported that combination of melphalan and prednisone was better than melphalan alone in both response rate and the survival rate. Since then, for 30 years, melphalan and prednisone had been the gold standard therapy until uh, turn of century. High dose melphalan is still used for conditioning of uh, bone marrow transplantation. The bone marrow transplantation has two kinds, allogeneic and uh, autologous. In allogeneic transplantation, the bone marrow cells are donated by somebody else. In autologous, the patient themselves donate their own bone marrow cells for transplantation. The first successful allogeneic bone marrow transplantation for multi myeloma was done in 1982. The identical twin brother donated his bone marrow. However, this allogeneic bone marrow transplantation is not considered a standard of care because of high treatment mortality, but it can be used as a uh, rest, last resort for refractory high-risk patients. The first autologous bone marrow transplantation was done in London, 1983. Autologous stem cell transplantation is a little bit different. Instead of using bone marrow cells, the stem cells obtained from the uh, peripheral blood are used. It is the standard, uh, standard of care for all newly diagnosed patients. It improves the survival over conventional chemotherapy. I like to show you how the autologous stem cell transplantation is done. The collection of patients' blood stem cells from the purple blood, blood is done through apheresis procedures. The, after extracting the uh, stem cells, the rest of blood are infused back to the patient, and that stem cells are frozen. And then patients will have a uh, high dose of chemotherapy and then the thawed stem cells are infused back into the patients through a central IV line. This is not done in one day. It takes about several weeks. 
Thalidomide was first discovered in Germany in 1953. It was a wonder drug to relieve the morning sickness, nausea, vomiting during pregnancy, and to relieve the anxiety used as a sleeping pill. But abandoned due to a tetra tetragenic effect on fetus, baby was born with the without arms and legs. But it is called a focomilia. Please look at this sad baby without arm and the legs. But in 1994, Dr. Damaro and Folkman at Harvard University discovered that thalidomide inhibited angiogenesis and was effective in suppressing tumor growth. In 1994, thalidomide was first used for the myeloma patients in New York at the request of patients' wife because uh, it is not the uh, uh, approved drug at that time. In, 19, in year 2006, Thalidomide in combination with the dexamethasone was approved by FDA as the first line myeloma therapy. Thalidomide is an immunomodulator. Immunomodulators have a three kinds of drug, thalidomide, lenalidomide, homalidomide. The mechanism of action is, as I said, is a tumor angiogenesis inhibition. Of three kinds approved by FDA, thalidomide, lenalidomide with a brand name Revlimid, Pomalidomide with a brand name Pomalist. They have important side effects that we must remember. They are tetragenic, so pregnancy is contraindicated, and these drugs can pass into semen. Must men must contracept. It, they often cause arterial and venous thromboembolism, such as pulmonary embolism, DVTs, stroke, or heart attack, especially when combined with dexamethasone. Patients need to have a prophylactic anticoagulation. They can cause uh, secondary cancer, especially blood cancer like leukemia. Lenalidomide only, uh, dose reduction for renal failure is necessary because it's can never toxic. Thalidomide can cause sedation because it was used as a sleeping pill. The combination of melphalan and prednisone was the gold standard therapy for myeloma for many years until this proteasome inhibitor was introduced about 20 years ago. Proteasome is a protein enzyme complex essential for degrading defective intracellular proteins to maintain protein homeostasis. Cancer cells depend on proteasome more than normal cells for survival because more defective proteins are produced by rapidly growing cancer cells. So by inhibiting proteasomes, cancer cells are damaged more than normal cells. Please look at this uh, picture. Proteasome needs a ubiqu ubiquitin to uh, degrade defective proteins in the uh, ubiquitin proteasome pathway. The ubiquitin is constantly looking for uh, defective proteins. When they find them, uh, they call for more ubiquitins to come and attach to those defective proteins. These uh, defective proteins attached with the uh, uh, ubiquitins attract the proteasome, and the proteasome degrade these defective proteins to polypeptides and eventually to amino acids for recycling. Normally, proteasomes are important for uh, intestinal, nerve, and the cardiac function. There are three commercially available proteasome inhibitors. Ortezonib, a Velcade, is the first and the uh, mostly widely used uh, drug. Cafilzomib, Kyprolis, Exazomib, Inlaro, Three scientists were awarded Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 2004 for their work on this ubiquitin proteasome pathway for protein degradation. Normally, proteasome is important for neurological, cardiac, and the GI system, so inhibiting proteasome can cause side effects on those systems. Patients can develop peripheral neuropathy, which is pretty common. Rarely, they can cause posterior reversible encephalopathy syndrome. Velcade can be given subcutaneously now, which causes less peripheral neuropathy than intravenous administration. Patients can develop congestive failure, arrhythmia, and they often develop diarrhea, constipation, nausea, and the hepatotoxicity. Rarely, they can cause thrombotic angio microangiopathy, such as TTP or hemolytic uremic syndrome. They can cause thrombocytopenia and neutropenia. Shingle prophylaxis is important use acyclovir or valacyclovir. 
Emerging monoclonal antibody therapy provides the uh, new horizon to myeloma patients now. There are two kinds, anti-CD38 monoclonal antibody and the anti-SLAM F7 monoclonal antibody. The CD38 is highly and uniformly expressed on myeloma cells and the lymphoma cells, but is expressed at low levels on normal plasma cells and the red blood cells. There are two kinds of drugs, daratumumab, Darzalex, and uh, isatuximab, Sarcliza. They are used in combination with the Velcade or Revlimid and other drugs. Anti-SLAM F7 monoclonal antibody has a one drug available. Elotuzumab, Amplicity is their brand name, are used with the Revlimid and Dexamethasone as a second line therapy. The anti-38 monoclonal antibodies such as Daratumumab or Isatuximab can cause a falsely positive indirect Coombs test after infusion of those drugs. Because red blood cells have a CD38 on the surface, after the, uh, those anti-CD38 monoclonal antibodies are infused, those uh, monoclonal antibodies bind those CD38 on the surface of red blood cells. When they need to have a blood transfusion, routinely a uh, type and cross-matching is done using the uh, Coombs reagents, which is anti-globin. Then this anti-globin binds the uh, monoclonal antibody, causing the uh, red blood cell aggregation. It's a kind of a confusing uh, situation. So the patients who need to have anti-CD38 drugs must have blood typing before treatment. They also can cause infusion reactions. So we routinely use the pre-medication and post-medication with the dexamethasone. Shingle prophylaxis is recommended. Before the treatment is started, we identify high-risk patients with a bone marrow fish test finding those chromosomal abnormalities associated with the high risk. They are translocation of chromosome number 4 and 14, 14, 16, 14, 20, and deletion of chromosome number 17. Those patients don't respond to the uh, uh, revlimid, so they need to have a Velcade. And then we find out if the patients are eligible for stem cell transplantation. They are usually younger with no liver problem and not frail. If eligible, Induction therapy with a VRD or KRD, Velcade, Revlimid, Dexamethasone, or Kyprolis are used for four cycles and the transplantation is done, followed by consolidation for four more cycles, and then maintenance therapy is given with the Velcade or Revlimid. Autologous stem cell transplantation can be done early or even later after, after the first relapse because there is no difference in survival between early and delayed transplantation. If the transplantation is not eligible or patients don't want to have it, we just give this, those uh, BRD or KRD for 12 cycles, followed by maintenance therapy with a Revlimid or Velcade. For frail patients, we simply use the uh, uh, Revlimid and Dexamethasone. For treatment of relapsed myeloma, in principle, patients are treated with the combinations of protriazone inhibitors immunomodulators and the monoclonal antibodies, which were not used previously. We can find many different combinations. The prognosis depends on how aggressive the disease is. If the myeloma recurred within 12 months from the initial therapy, it's a high risk and prognosis is poor. Repeated uh, autologous stem cell transplantation can be done, but if the myeloma recurred within 24 hours after the first transplantation, it's a high risk. Allogeneic bone marrow transplantation can be done as a last resort. What's the future of myeloma treatment? Newly developed drugs such as Kyprolis or Dazolex produce deep responses with extended minimal residual disease. A recent study comparing KRD, which is Kyprolis with the uh, Revlimid dexamethasone with and without transplantation showed uh, no difference in uh, efficacy and uh, uh, minimal residual disease negativity, indicating stem cell transplantation may not be necessary with the emerging treatment with more effective drugs in the future. Humeric antigen receptor T-cell, CAR T-cell therapy is very promising. Interestingly, about 14% of patients survive over 20 years with the even evidence of residual disease, which indicates Absolute negative disease is not the only reason for long-term survival. Also, only a small portion of MGUS patients develop multi-myeloma.
So discovering the uh, mechanism to revert aggressive myeloma to MGUS or indolent disease may warrant, warrant Nobel Prize. Thank you for watching.